We open with a prayer from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of you, O God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Welcome, friends, to our, our pep talk that Jesus shared with his followers. And we're visiting this and helping them get us through these troubled times that we're facing with these different uh, endearing and strengthening thoughts that we're given. I realize that at this time we've been pretty isolated, haven't we? In some cases, some of you have been pretty much by yourself during this time. In other cases, maybe it's just you and your spouse uh, or maybe another friend or, you know, a couple of family members. It's, it's very limited. I want you to stop right now and turn to the people who are with you and say, you are great companionship. And just share that with them. Or if you're all alone, next person you talk to, say, hey, you're a good friend. Well, that can be the case that we have some great companionship and great friendship with one another, even though it's limited, but let's uh, enjoy it. Uh, however, there is better companionship that we're going to look at today. Today, what I would call the best companionship in John chapter 14, uh, beginning in verse 19. And so let's learn of the best companionship. The first one has to do with Jesus, the Son. And what's emphasized is the Son, the Son of God's revelation. That's brought out in verses 19 to 21 of John 14. Jesus said, after a little while, the world will no longer see me but you will see me. There's that same word for see that we saw in the previous verse where it, it's a word that emphasizes careful observation. You're closely seeing and paying close attention, much like a spectator looking at something closely. And he's acknowledging that, hey, the world is not going to see me, but you will see me. And then he goes on to say, because I live, you will live also. There is so much packed in that statement. Uh, that's our eternal life. Because Jesus lives, we will live. We've got eternal life. The only way that life can be taken away from us is if it could be taken away from Jesus. And that's not possible. So we've got eternal life, which takes us on into eternity. But that eternal life is something that we begin to enjoy the moment we put our faith and trust in Christ as our Savior and Lord and God. And then we're experiencing that eternal life and we're seeing him more in a way that we can see very closely and attentively. And Jesus adds on top of that in verse 20, uh, in that day, you will know when he speaks of three different spiritual unions, which are all true. In that day, and I think it's the day when he ascends back to the father. Uh, in that day, you will know of these three spiritual unions uh, the first one being, I am in my Father. Now that, of course, is a perfect spiritual union. But he makes reference to a second spiritual union. And you in me. There is so much truth in that. For a Christian to be in Jesus, that's our position. That's the basis of all of the spiritual wealth that's being given a believer in Christ being in him. And then he adds, and I in you. That's the basis of our hope. That's the source of power to become godlier and more like Christ, Christ in us. And then he stresses what he's already stressed in verse 15, where he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. But remember, he has to repeat these truths and keep on reinforcing them. And he says in verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. Again, talk is cheap. Many people in that day and this day could claim to love Jesus. And Jesus says, if you keep my commandments and have my commandments and keep them, those are the ones who love me, who have responded to me. And he says, he who loves me will be loved by my father. Now, it is true that the Father loves everyone in the world. But here he's talking about a special love that the Father will have for those who have responded to faith in faith in Jesus. And they will be loved in a special way by the Father. And Jesus uh, adds on top of that, and I will love him. 
Jesus, who loves the entire world and gave himself as a sacrifice for the entire world, will have and express a special love for those who respond to him in faith. And it expresses itself in love that obeys him. And then he adds, I will disclose, I will reveal myself to him. Wow, here is the best companionship where Jesus is offering this ongoing experience of revealing himself, disclosing himself, and more of himself to us. You know the problem with some of us right now? We're more caught up with revealing the latest of world news or discovering the latest of national news or local news, and we're missing out on what Jesus wants to reveal to us. And I just exhort you, to be more concerned with what Jesus wants to reveal to you than what a newscaster wants to reveal to you or discovering the latest news of what's out there. You've got this offer from the best company of Jesus revealing himself to you. But then it gets better. Um, I don't know how it can get better, but it does because now it's the father and the son that are involved in making a home. Where are they making their home? Let's look at the next couple of verses in verses 22 to 24. Judas, not Iscariot, he was also known as Thaddeus. He, he said to Jesus, said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you're going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? Now, behind this, in the thinking of the disciples, Jesus, we thought you were going to establish your kingdom on earth right now. And the whole world was going to see that. You are going to disclose and reveal yourself as the Messiah to the whole world. So in what sense are you just going to reveal yourself to us and not to the whole world? Jesus once again repeats this important truth of those who love him and demonstrate it by obedience. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. He will keep my teaching and my father will love him in a special way. We'll love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Now, some understand this. We will come to him as a reference to the future with Jesus, uh, the rapture and the second coming of Christ when he will return for his own. Now, that's a true statement. But I think in the context, what Jesus has in mind is we will come to him right now through the Holy Spirit and we will make our home with you. This word for uh, abode was used in chapter 14, verse 2, where Jesus said, in my father's house are many dwelling places, many rooms, many abodes. And that's the reference there in the future. He's got rooms for us in the the Father's house in heaven. But now he's offering us uh, for those followers of Christ, both God the Father and God the Son will come and be at home in these believers. And they'll make their home in a special way inside of these believers. Think about that kind of company. God the Father and God the Son making themselves at home inside of us? Of course, through the Holy Spirit, that is the reality that they're offering of what can take place. Now he warns by saying the opposite truth in verse 24, so people won't miss out. He who does not love me does not keep my words, doesn't keep my teaching. And the word which I hear uh, you hear, hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. You're not only rejecting Jesus' teaching and Jesus' words, but you're rejecting the words and teaching that the Father has given to the Son and sent him to share those words. So to reject Jesus and disobey Jesus and not believe in Jesus is to reject both God the Father and God the Son. And they, of course, miss out on the Father and Son making their abode inside of you as well. And you don't want to miss out on that. That's the kind of companionship, which is the best companionship. And that can even be in rotten times, even in miserable times. Uh, Those times do not change that we can enjoy the best of company with God the Father and God the Son. And they've made themselves at home inside of us. 
Now, there's so much to Jesus' teaching which he calls us to obey and calls us to respond to. Uh, We can, with those disciples, say, it's too much. How are we going to understand these things? We're going to forget. And so Jesus, in verses 25 and 26, stresses that the Spirit will come as the best company to be our teacher. The Spirit's teaching. He says in verse 25, these things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. And you can be thinking, wow, you've shared so much, Jesus. How are we going to remember these things? Well, it's by the Spirit coming and teaching. And it says there, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, the the one, the Helper, called alongside to help us with whatever that spiritual need might be. He's the Holy Spirit who is holy and he makes people holy, whom the Father will send in my name. So God the Father sent God the Son, and now uh, God the Father, after Jesus returns back to him, he will send the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And what will he do? He will teach you all things. Something interesting happens with the word he here. In the original language, the word spirit, Holy Spirit, spirit is neuter and gender. And so you would expect he would be neuter as well, but instead it's he masculine. Because the the Bible writers wanted to understand that the Holy Spirit is not a force. He's not some kind of an impersonal force. He's a person. And this person, he comes. And one of his major roles is to teach us all things and bring the remembrance all that Jesus said to his disciples. This, of course, was the basis of the New Testament. With these very followers of Christ, these apostles, the Holy Spirit taught them all things and brought to remembrance the things they forgot or or, uh, needed to be clarified on. The Holy Spirit did that. And so now we have the whole New Testament. We have the whole Bible which the Spirit of God wants us to grab a hold of and speak to us and lead us into these truths. A challenging question for you and me right now is what are we doing to avail this opportunity to allow the Spirit of truth to lead and guide us into these truths? What are you doing on a daily basis? Spending time with him so he can guide and lead you into all of these truths. What a precious offer we have right now. The company you're with, that's good company. But you've got the company here of Jesus being with you and the the Father and the Son being at home with you and the Holy Spirit there teaching you and guiding you into all truth. Please don't ignore that. It's becoming far too commonplace. And I realize with social distancing, it's not happening as much. But it's become far too commonplace where you've got a group of friends together and they are not interacting at all with one another. Each one of them is staring at their screen and there's no personal interaction whatsoever with that group of friends that are together. I even saw a comic uh, strip of a husband and wife lying in bed together at night and you got it. Both of them were looking at their separate screens away from one another with no personal interaction uh, with their own marriage. We don't want that with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That they're offering that kind of personal companionship and interaction with them. And we're too busy with our screens. We're too busy with other pursuits when they're offering that kind of company and that kind of personal interaction, now's a good time as things are running slower to develop that habit. Let's, in these slow times, make the most of really welcoming what God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit want us to experience, yes, in community with one another, but a community that includes them and you privately including them on a daily basis in that way as well. Let's pray. Uh, There's so much we can pray about in light of these truths and what Jesus has talked about. Let's pray that we can can go and uh, grow in obeying Jesus and showing 
our love for him. Let's thank God for the staggering offer that we have here, that he desires to be with us. He loves us with a special love if we've believed in Jesus. And let's just thank him for that reality. Let's pray that we would enjoy the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and we would take time enough to just quiet our busyness down, quiet our distractions down and enjoy that sweet fellowship with God. Ah, uh, let's pray and welcome more and more of God revealing himself to us. And as he has made himself at home with us, that we would have that sense of being at home with him and develop that relationship and be attentive. Oh, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of you, God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Hey, friends, we'll be back with you on Thursday as we go into more of these wonderful treasures in this passage of Scripture.